What's up everyone, it's OJH and we're back at it again and recently I asked within a couple of the larger Warcraft Rumble Discord communities that I'm a part of for people to give me their feedback on the game. The good stuff, the bad stuff, the things that you would like to see in the future and if anyone's got any balance change ideas then get them to me as well. Now this video is coming off the back of the interview that um, was ha that was released yesterday, which was a bit of a Q and A with some of the Warcraft Rumble team. If you haven't seen that yet, uh, then I'll link my uh, live reaction video to it up here. Uh, there wasn't a great deal that came out of it, if I'm honest, but. I have spoken to Blizzard and they are interested in this video that we're making now. So if you've got any other feedback points that are not in the main content of this video, then please put them in the comments below and I'll be sending this off within the next couple of days when we've collated a few more ideas. But I do want to say a big thank you to everyone from those communities who's given me their feedback because there was a lot of people. And on that, I recently became a YouTube partner. So thank you to everyone who supports to the channel i do really really appreciate it and as an example of where that support goes i recently ran a giveaway where i posted a 3d mini to the winner to the winner from here in the uk out to canada so your support helps me be able to run promotions and giveaways like that but let's jump in to the feedback then starting out with some general stuff then so these are in no um, no priority order i have tried to group some of the more common themes that I've got um, and one of them was around the uh, quest cap and why is there a quest cap when there's already a daily experience cap and that that was pretty much going to be that once you've done your quests and if you work through your backlog then people are being forced into pvp because there aren't a load of options for people to do especially since the frequency of um certain events uh have been reduced over time so people log on they've hit their uh, daily quest cap so it's kind of only really PvP for them to do. So I think that's a that's a valid point. And also one of the quests is that showing a, a countdown figure of where you are up to on your quests and how many are left in the pool of quests before you hit that daily cap. Because why wouldn't you? Next up is going to be the deck slots, the leaders, and all that sort of stuff. And essentially, um, the 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 leader UI, the kind of swiping across the different leaders that you've got, and the whole sort of deck slot army UI can, could just be better. And uh, there are a number of ways that it could be better, but it could just be better. Uh, multiple loadouts for each leader. Yes, absolutely. This has been discussed many, many times. And if you watched the interview yesterday, there will be some commonality between the points that you have raised here and the questions that were asked yesterday. But multiple uh, loadout slots per leader to mean that you can go from different content types without having to constantly change all of the minis within that or to get your specific minis in there would make the game so much better. The developers' uh, feedback yesterday was that they're really not dedicating any resource to this at the moment, which I think is alarming if i'm honest with you because this comes up so so frequently as something that the community really really want to see so just please do it if someone likes to be able to label their um extra extra loadouts i'm not fussed either way i would just be happy with the uh, with the extra uh loadout options um but hey, uh, I don't think that's coming anytime soon. And then also to add more well-known leaders to the game, Thrall, uh, Illidan, etc., etc. Whether you add them as leaders or add them as minis, to be honest, these are some pretty big characters. And it might be doing them a little bit of a disservice to have them in as your just like regular uh, minis that can be used in any army. So possibly new um possibly new leaders when they come into the game again this was mentioned to the dev team uh, on the interview yesterday uh, or to the representatives from warcraft rumble and they said that they are warcraft rumble fans first and foremost but they were not going to commit at all to whether this was going to come in the future whether it's been worked on at all um so look it's been asked for by plenty of people plenty of times and we'll have to wait and see where we get to on that one Rework of the Guild War Chest. So I have been like, um, you know, asking about the Guild War Chest regularly since its inception because many guilds finish the War Chest very 
very quickly now i'm sure there'll be some guilds out there that it maybe takes a little bit longer and there might be some out there that aren't up to capacity or don't um don't play uh, that often have that activity level who don't quite complete it that's absolutely fine but as far as the actual rewards of it go and how you can complete that and how quickly it can be completed if you have an active guild and also with the Scenarian family coming into the game soon, that there will be a sixth family contributing to your guild war chest, but the guild war chest still only has rewards at 10k, 20k, and 30k. So you're going to have even more opportunity to complete that, but no extra value. And I think that in adding the Scenarian family, they missed a trick by not making the guild war chest better basically and by better i mean to have more rewards on it um again let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with that in fact let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with any of this or if i don't cover a particular point that you want to mention get it in the comments and we'll uh, i'll forward that on for you and then again, this was mentioned in the interview, trading your cores. So whether it be trained, trading from rare to epic, epic to legendary, whatever it is. But I know that there are a lot of people sat with uh, 15, 20 rare cores in their inventory, crying out for epic cores, desperate for epic cores, but they are few and far between. Um, and it's just really, really frustrating because there are a number, there are essentially too many currencies um, was another bit of feedback in the game. When you want to level up a mini, you need to have experience, you need to have stars, you need to have arc light energy, and you need to have the core to get them there. Um, and, you know, it, the core thing, I, I feel that there should just be a trade-up mechanic in there. I don't know, make it five five rares for an epic. It, 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 look, it doesn't really matter, but epics are, uh, rares are much more frequent in the game than epics. It bottlenecks when you're trying to get... Car, uh, your mini's too epic just put a trade in there please so talking of the economy then um as i just mentioned there there are frustrating bottlenecks because um of of the way that it, the way that the, the game mechanics work um so you're trying to get your stars uh from the grid probably most probably then in the early times or, or lower in the um lower in your leveling journey it seems like you've got arc light energy to burn and that you'll never run out of arc light energy and then shortly after that you realize uh when you're getting a bit more leveled up that actually arc light energy comes at an absolute premium and you can only get it by doing your dungeon again the comment here is haven't seen an epic court in weeks yes exactly um and the resource balance is, is very far off. So the suggestion here is that you should be able to grind everything in the game. And it just comes down to the time that you put in as to how much uh, or to how soon you can access that. If you do want to pay things, then you can pay to accelerate that, but not pay to get hold of things like an Epic Core, just because they are not turning up in any other um, bit of content. And as I just mentioned there, uh, there are so many different um currencies for you uh, required to level up your minis that you're bound to come up against a bottleneck at some point when you need four different uh four different currencies uh for each mini so i'm uh, I'm, on, I'm on board uh with 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 many uh bits of that um someone else wanted an incentive to complete the siege uh, or and raid uh, more than once a week whether that be some gold per boss or something like that, just a little bit of something because unless you're helping your guildmates so you get that kind of satisfaction, I suppose, or that just being a good guildmate or whatever you want to call it, that you're going to go in there and help your guildmates who might be struggling on a particular boss get them through it. But from a personal standpoint, if you've already done it, then there is no reward, there is, there is no reason you're just being helpful you're just being a you know a good guild mate and helping out so i definitely do think that there should be something because a lot of people are completing sieges especially we're talking in like 15 minutes um and then that's it that's the week's worth of content there 15 minutes done uh there's no incentive to go back through it so yeah i'm, I'm on board with this a little bit of something it doesn't need to be massive just a little bit of something uh, to mean that rerunning it uh, does have some benefit and then achievements, again, achievements was mentioned uh, in the uh, Q&A. Um, 
the, the response um, to the achievements question had nothing to do with achievements. Um, I'd like to see achievements in there. There are plenty of achievements in World of Warcraft. There are plenty of achievements in other mobile games that I play, like Clash Royale, like Squad Busters. Use X-Mini uh, so many times, get so much damage with X-Mini, or whatever it uh, might be. There are so many things that could be done around achievements, and especially to encourage use of minis that really don't get much uh, use at all. As I mentioned before, gaining arc light energy is too slow. I definitely agree with this. Uh, the adding of the media, mega and mythic tomes and gold as rewards in the dailies was a very nice touch, and I do completely agree with this. It was much uh, nicer to uh, be completing those dailies, not just for some, uh, you know, some prettier some pretty non-impactful, uh, you know, uh, tomes, basically. Um, but can we buff it to increase the frequency slightly? I, and I agree with this because uh, I know that there was gold that was uh, added into the uh, daily rewards. It took an absolute eternity for me to see the 500 gold. And I think that's about all I've seen. Um, so it was nice when it came and, and that was that was great. But it wouldn't be a bad thing if that did come around just a tiny bit more often and the same with the tomes. I think that since the buff to this, I think I've had one mythic tome. Um, so it would be nice to have it a little bit more frequently if we could do please. Um, ability to toggle guild chat window on or off during battle so we don't miss an invite or important message while fighting. So this isn't something that I uh, would have even thought of. This isn't something that I'm particularly interested in but it has been asked for by people for me if i'm in a battle the chances of me checking my messages are slim and none really is there going to be a message that's so important that whilst i'm in a battle that it couldn't have waited the three minutes or four minutes or five minutes for me to get to it you know typically not um and is the screen and the ui kind of big enough for you to get a guild uh, a guild chat window on there look i don't even you know i i, I don't I don't know, but, you know, maybe there'll be some, um, you know, maybe some of you will hear this as a suggestion on this video, uh, and if this is something that you'd like to see, then let me know down in the comments, and I'll uh, I'll certainly uh, pass it on, because I am trying to represent you in the community's feedback and uh, get our voices heard. Um, bring back previously expired zone offers every now and then in case we want to buy them. I don't, I didn't care about 10,000 Arca energy in the first month I played the game, but I sure do now. And this goes back to earlier points. And I don't understand because it can't cost Blizzard anything to put the offers into the game. And surely if someone either didn't buy it or was interested in buying it again, then it's only going to be money in Blizzard's pocket at the end of the day, isn't it? So I don't know why they wouldn't... Um, uh, you know, reissue some of these offers l like later in the game. But essentially, to have it as a one hit, one shot, that you either buy it now, you beat Anixia, you buy it now, or it's forever gone. I think it just seems a little bit, a little bit strange. I'm not sure of the, uh, of the rationale behind that, but yeah. And then there was a number of other things that were put in there. Uh, they speak for themselves. We don't need to, um, you know, go into loads of detail about these. But our spectator mode will be absolutely amazing be that spectating your guild mates. Um, at the bottom there, we've got friends lists. So be that spectating your friends. I think later when we talk about PVP, we talk about a global leaderboard. Maybe you'll be able to spectate people on the leaderboard. I think that that would just be really, really good for people because at the minute um, you have to record the gameplay and then share it because like, I've, like I'm about to say now on replays is that there is no way of sharing replays in the game apart from that you film it yourself and then you upload it somewhere, YouTube or share it in Discord or do whatever you do, and then and then that's it. Um, custom games. We would love to see custom games fair, uh, friendly PvP so we can do tournaments and so you can play against your guildmates and and any somewhere where you can play PvP that's not on the main competitive ladder. At the moment, there is nowhere for you to test the deck. There is nowhere for you to trial some minis. You just have to go onto the ladder and then see how it works. And you know, and if it works out for you, then great, you've, you've got some honor. And if it doesn't work out for you, then you've lost honor and it just feels rubbish. Um, so custom games uh, with different, you can maybe choose modifiers um, for that particular battle whether you want it, you know, to be collateral damage or 
you know, what, whatever it might be. I mean, you don't know, you might even be able to add like um, the chaos chests from Dark Moon Fair. Just, it should just be something that you can do as serious or as fun. Um, and like I say, us as creators, we really, really keen to get some tournaments going, get some prize pools up there and stuff like that. And it would just, it would just add another dimension to the game. And then share index. Yep, if you're in your guild and somebody's asking for a deck for a particular thing, if you've got one, you can just share the link to it in there. They can hopefully just copy it into one of their deck slots. Nice and easy, a really nice uh, quality of life upgrade. Moving on to the PvP stuff then. So we've got a couple linked into one here. So uh, there was the suggestion to remove level 11. Unfortunately, that is highly unlikely because obviously a lot of people have spent money and put resources into that. So that, that I just don't see how a rewind mechanic would be done. But I do think that level 11 was potentially reach, uh, released a little bit early in the life cycle of the game because there was a lot of people that certainly hadn't made it up to 10 yet. Um, and then adding in level 11 has just made that uh, uh, gap a little bit wider. Although I understand that if there are people who've got a maxed level 10 deck or that max level 10 minis, um, then it's like an incentive for them to push on, <clears throat> excuse me, push on a little bit more um, but I do think that level 11 maybe came out a little bit early. And also the removal of the level caps below 3,000 honor um, has meant that for new players to PvP, I think the, I was going to say the learning curve is quite steep, but it's not, it shouldn't be a learning curve. Um, although maybe you are just learning that, you know, mini levels are incredibly important in this game, but you're going into PvP is a you know for your first time and you're not you shouldn't be matched against level 11s from the offset because there are now placement matches that are in the game you know bots let's call it right so there are placement matches that are in the game to kind of get you to where you sort of need to be but you can still run into some some people that have maybe got eights nines tens in your early pvp days when you might be rocking some fives and sixes um, and no matter how good of a player you are you're gonna have to be pretty good to overcome you know a, a two or three difference so actually what has been suggested by a number of people was for more level caps to be added so a level seven up to 4k a level nine up to 5k and then have the free for all happen from 5k onwards and you know unless unless there's some reason why that would be a bad idea which i I really can't think of at the moment. Um, then, then I'm all I'm all for this. The matchmaking. I've spoken a lot about the matchmaking. I don't really understand the algorithm for the matchmaking. Uh, you can be matched against seemingly anyone. You can be matched against someone who has minis that are much lower than yours. You can also be matched against the number three in the world player, even when you're nowhere near that level. I'm also not a fan of the matchmaking. Sometimes matching you back to back with the same person or if you really look you'll get them back to back to back and if you do end up losing all three then that's an absolute joy um so i'm, I'm really not sure about the what the matchmaking algorithm is um but you know i've, I've seen lots of people saying that this is a this seems to be a little bit of a mess could do the bit of tweaking and a same tower level mode what's going on with my eye yeah, exactly. Some sort of just standard level mode where everybody's minis are level one. And then it's just you versus me who is tactically better. Adding map rotations, modifiers and chance was hugely positive. Yes, it absolutely was. And uh, bringing the rotation of those down to being uh, weekly rather than two weekly, I think was a massive step in the right direction. Because having to uh, having some of the same, uh, having you know a particular tower for six weeks as it was of old felt like a pretty long time. Um, so having it now weekly changes does help to keep the meta changing. Albeit that there were comments saying that even one week uh, was too slow, and that maybe all three at random every game, um, and then and then so on and so forth. And for me, I think the one week is fine. I, I, I think that having all three at random every game would... You wouldn't be able to necessarily plan for it, but it means that like there would never be a meta. Now, some people argue that there 
shouldn't be a meta. But for me, having a meta that lasts one week, um, as it does at the moment, then there'll be something that'll change the tower, the modifier, the enchant, whatever it is. That tends to change the meta anyway. So for me, I don't mind uh, the one week, uh, the one week metas at the moment. I don't think that um, I don't think that changing everything every game. Um, also, that when you load into the game, you don't have to get your head around what the heck was going on every time. So I'm. Uh, I'm not for this one, but maybe other people are. So like I say, let me know in the comments. Global leaderboard, mentioned it before. There is the uh, warcraftrumble.gg leaderboard. There are a couple of other slightly unofficial leaderboards that are going on around there. But just, just give us a leaderboard. 2v2, so co-op is obviously in the game now with raids and sieges. Um, so give us a 2v2 PvP. You know, and make it on the current maps. Look, it might be busy, it might be absolute pandemonium, but I think that there is a you know opportunity to be had there, and it doesn't need to be 2v2 with your guildmates, it's just that you queue for a 2v2 game, you're given a partner, um, and then you go you go into the match. Or you can maybe in your guild chat, you know, put a notification in there that you are looking for a 2v2 partner, in which case you can join with a guildmate and fight against someone else. I think the 2v2 would be really, really good. And then PvP beyond 20k needs a purpose. I've never hit 20k, but I can see that you hit 20k and that, that's it. The reward tree runs out. Uh, there's no leaderboard. There's no... Um, you know, badges, there's no special emotes, there's no um, cosmetics, there's nothing. You get to 20k, great, like, well done, that's that's brilliant, like I say, I've never done it. You get to 25k at the minute, right, and you get to 30k, just doesn't matter. Um, so I do think that there needs to be some sort of look at the top, top end of the ladder, just to insert something in there that people can strive for. Like I say, cosmetics, um, custom emotes, I think that those things would, uh, I think that even those things would be, uh, would add a nice dimension to it. And on to PvP then. So the comments have been that the campaign is good, although it's a little bit of a jump to Anixia. So this has been sort of bridged a little bit or will be when Moonglade comes out because it's going to give you uh, that level 26 and 27 content, I think, uh, before you go to Anixia at 30. Also with the introduction of sieges and raids and the rewards that you can get from that, be it the uh, the Mythic Tomes, uh, the wildcard slot, the boost slot, the Valor, um, the Anixia here and now today should be in its most... Um, achievable state that it's ever been in because of the way that you can boost your deck. So hopefully um, that people will start to see that if they're not already feeling that. Uh, dungeons got capped at level 23. So the question that was posed was, so what? what is the purpose of the dungeon now on your, your weekly dungeon and there was uh, some good comments as in some people think that's a good change that they got capped at 23 and some people think it's a bad change uh, in the camp of the good change it was that you know it's easy to go in there you can just farm it quickly um and and you know it's a it's a it's a tiny little bit of content for you to get through in the week um yeah and, and there's a few rewards that come from it, arc light energy and the gold that you get off the back of it, then great. The bad was, well, what's the point? It doesn't feel valuable for me to just go in there and just steamroll this um, for, you know, for the rewards that you're giving. So it's like a waste of time. Just don't feel motivated to do it. And like, what are we, what what is the purpose of the, of, of, of the, dun of the dungeons now? So moving on to the raid then, Molten Core Raid was the single most enjoyable experience I've had in the game and would love to see more raids added in the near future. And, you know, I can't really disagree with that because bosses actually needed some coordination. They were genuinely, you know, you weren't going to go in there and just steamroll them. Uh, there are still people who, you know, that haven't finished it because it is more difficult content and that's what it's supposed to be, you know, to keep people engaged and stuff. So yeah, no, I think that the, uh, the raids were a really big success. And when they were introduced, in the most part, that it went quite smoothly, if I remember uh, correctly. Um, improve the interface for starting raids so people can gr group up so you don't end up with an accidentally the wrong partner. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I've got nothing more to say about that. Um, option to pair with randoms and make it easier. We just have to grind more for rewards. I don't play mobile games, so I can hook up with someone in voice chat to play it. And I think this is where um, World of Warcraft, with its normal 
you know, dungeon or raid makeup and it, and it normally having, you know, five people or 10 people or 20 people or, or whatever, or back in the day, it was like 40 people. Um, that it's not always a thing to get that many people together and it's a mobile phone game. So how much coordination in this are you going to put in? So obviously in World of Warcraft, they found that people were finding it difficult to do that. So they put the uh, looking for group feature in there so you could just join with random people and go and do this content. Great. And I do think that that would be a good thing to do, um, especially for people that are maybe in a guild with people that they get on with, but then they're, you know, uh, geographically uh, dispersed around the world and, uh, you know, getting time zones worked out and stuff. I'd, I, you know, I support this. I I, I think that a, a, a being able to pair with random people outside of your guild, that works for me. And then to always have a raid up. And again, I agree with this one. I am of the mindset that the more content we've got active in the game and the more things people to do we're more engaged and then we can you know progress our uh, minis progress our army levels and so on and so forth there seems to be a thought process in blizzard at the moment that we don't want to have too many things going on at once and i don't know if that is a game performance optimization piece um or whatever but it was when raids and sieges came the frequency of dark moon fair and blingtron's bounties got cut in half but sieges we can do them at the same time and I, you know i'm sure there's people that already find it enough of a push to do these things um but look at the end of the day you don't have to do them just because the event is up if you're too busy don't do it it doesn't it, it, it doesn't matter um i just don't i just don't kind of subscribe to the mantra that there's there's like too much to do like if you've got the time you'll do it and if you don't have the time then you won't do it it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't matter um and then sieges are over too quickly for a week of content again this just this just like matches up with what i was saying a second ago going to a siege 15 minutes 20 minutes done that's it for the week no blingtron no dark moon fair no raid nothing so I just think that there can be more things uh, personally. I think, and I'd like there to be more things going on every single week. Quests then, so if the quest enemy is going to scale, reward should scale too, or better yet, let me choose the difficulty as a risk reward like schools in Halo. Now I'm not a Halo player, but I'm assuming this is something where you can have like one school where you're on kind of like, you know, easy difficulty, or you can put five schools in there where you're on like God mode or something like that, and then the rewards will increase as it goes. And uh, and yeah, why, uh, why not? And this kind of links in with the deleveling of quests because at some point you can get to a point where the uh, the AI is of a pretty high level, and then your quest is becoming a real slog. So people go in, lose, uh, and then the AI level comes down. You do that a couple of times, and then you just steamroller it. Why? What's the point? Why not just have the quest that is the level of your army? Or have it that you can scale the level of the quest depending on how strong that you want, you know, how difficult of a challenge that you want to make it to be. I, I just don't, I'm not really understanding this. And this, this D-leveling quest thing just is, um, it's just a, a, a like a, for me, a, a weird and unnecessary thing to do. Just, just make it, just make it different. Um... DMF and Blingtron extras that were unexpected. Yeah, absolutely. I think we kind of knew that the uh, Dark Moon Fair was coming. There's a few teasers on that Blinktron. I, I don't think there was much that just that just came. But they need to be returned to their original frequency. Yes, absolutely. Blinktron DMF every week in addition to Siege and Raid. Yes, I am with you on this one. Explain DMF and PvP modifiers in-game so we aren't left guessing. Now, there is... If you click on the Dark Moon Fair um, UI, then in the top right corner, there's an information button. If you click that, it'll give you information about it. But that, I only found that uh, like a week or two ago. And when I mentioned it in the creator program, that the, the kind of creator manager, I suppose, he also said that he had only just found it as well. So uh, there are, um, there are uh, ways of finding out but maybe it's not the clearest and obviously at the moment there's a bug in pvp where if you click on the tower the enchant or the modifier excuse me that um that it doesn't work and then you need to kind of go through that clicking on different leaders and then eventually it'll work so that bug has been in for quite a while now and that's quite frustrating and then make the dmf rewards clearer is it one star is it four stars what is it on the first ever dark moon fair there was a um a mini near the top 
And then there was the same Mini lower down, but with a yellow background. Um, and they both just gave one star. And we said to them at the very beginning, this is confusing. Why is there a different icon when you're offering the same thing? And it was, yeah, okay, no, we get it, we'll, we'll get that sorted. Um, but yeah, here we are, we are weeks, months down the line, uh, and there's still not clear kind of what you're getting um, and why is it costing me so many tickets to get a Holy Nova? Oh, oh, it's four stars for your Holy Nova. Well, you know, it, it, it really, really does need clearing up and, and has done since day one. Balance changes very, very quickly on balance changes. There wasn't loads of balance changes that came through, but a couple that did was a HP nerf to the Ghoul and the Harvest Golem. Look, I like the Ghoul and the Harvest Golem. They're like two, a two and three gold. Uh, ghoul, decent at tanking. Um, if he gets a chance to do his uh, cannibalize, then he'll stay, for, stay around for a while. Uh, but I'm happy with the Ghoul. Harvest Golem gets loads of value for three, uh, for, th for three gold, especially if you've either got the stun talent or the chicken's talent, you know, we'll, we'll get loads of value taken out um a big single target um minis um harvest golem might be a little bit on the strong side oh look i'm happy with them i've got no problem with them increase polymorph by one gold mm. ah, look again you know i'm all right with polymorph being where it is because if at the end of the day i think people tend to polymorph then deep breath um and that's costing seven anyway you think polymorph's three deep breath four so um i'm all right with that I think reduce Sylvanas and Sneed by one gold. Not sure about Sneed. I think that Sneed's got a place at certain times. And if you use Sneed properly, then you can get insane value uh, because of the uh, Sneed before greed and the double gold and stuff. I would like to see something done with Sylvanas, though. I know they made her passive uh, so that um, uh, everything had a, uh, everything within the army had a speed boost. Um, but I still think for six gold, uh, I think, in fairness, I think most, if not all of the six gold minis in the game are probably not really worth it for the impact they have. So yeah, I could I could see that. Rework Ragnaros spell or make it one gold. The Blast Wave spell, I don't even know what it really does. All I know is that if I ever play Ragnaros, then I'm always stuck with this, like, this spell that I just have to get rid of at some point for three gold that doesn't really ever seem to do anything. So if, if someone's got a great tactic for the uh, the Blast Wave spell, then let me know in the comments because um, I don't know what to do with it. In fairness, I don't think Ragnaros is very good anyway. Um, but yeah, okay, so uh, rework the spell, make it one gold. Yeah, either of them. And then reduce tower healing from the Shaman down to 5%. Now, I think that obviously uh, spell damage to towers was nerfed, but the Shaman will still heal... Um, 10% of equal level and then I think there's plus or minus 1% for each level above or, or below um, and yeah absolutely because I think that Shaman has been one of the uh, reasons why PvP matches can go on for an eternity now because um, and then you end up in that sort of spell rush at the end just trying to execute each other's towers and, and, and just hope that you win um, so no I would uh, yeah absolutely I'm, uh, I've, I would fully agree with bringing the Shamans healing down so that is everything that we've got from the community it's probably a longer video than i thought it was going to be but this is going to go to blizzard so if you've got any comments on the changes that are in this video or any comments on changes that are not in this video or comments of things that are good that you want to see more of or things that you want to see in the future let me know get in the comments below as always though thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one